so much. This is pretty amazing to look out at all of these amazing women and know that we all share in the same fight and do the same work. I'm very humbled to be here today. And before I continue, I just want to take a moment to deconstruct what I just said because I talked about how grateful I was and I talked about the work I do and how important it is, but I didn't talk about myself or my accomplishments or any ability or talent that I might have brought to the table in order to get here today. And that is because when women do that, they are liked less than when men do that. Typically when a woman talks about her accomplishments and her achievements, it is an immediate sign, an immediate trigger for you to like her less. And because you actually all really are amazing, I would really like you to like me. But I did want to point that out. So, onward. Here are two facts. Women really, really, really want to be well liked. They don't want to cause trouble. They don't want to rock the boat. It's very important for people not to be mad at them. They want you to like them, to really, really like them. And likability in women correlates negatively with success. So as men progress and become more successful, they become more likable. But the data shows that that is not the same case for women. So I've been thinking about this a lot lately because I've been get, I'm getting this award uh, for making trouble. And um, I've been thinking about the phrase that Letty mentioned, well-behaved women rarely make history. And I actually, I went to Wikipedia, which helped me in this case. Uh, Laurel Thatcher Ulrich, Pulitzer Spring Wise author, coined that term. Uh, and I have it emblazoned on a t-shirt in my apartment. And, but I've never really thought about it before. I've never thought about what it means to be well-behaved. I've been, you know, I've, the, the title of troublemaker is one that is fantastic. It's, it's very cool these days to, part of my language, but to quote unquote, kick some ass. And the notion of making trouble correlates with all of, you know, with the image of the kind of woman who you would see in those commercials with, you know, striding through life, her hair gleaming behind her, maybe there's a wind machine. I am strong, I am invincible, I am woman. We all know where that's from, I, I assume. Um, I'm not gonna get up here and sing. But there is a darker flip side to making trouble and to not behaving. And the, the dark side comes in the costs, the personal costs, the quiet costs that come every time you don't toe the line, every time you speak out, every time when people are pushing at you that you push back. And these are the costs that women face all the time, and this is one of the things that I like to speak about because the more it is acknowledged, the more difficult it is to perpetuate. Uh, Rachel Simmons is a, a terrific researcher who uh, has done some work that shows that little girls, if you ask them early on in grade school, who's the fastest runner, they'll all raise their hands and say they're the fastest runner. Then a few years later, when you ask who the fastest runner, they'll all point to the fastest runner. And then a few years later, when they're in middle school and you ask who the fastest runner is, when they point to the fastest runner, that girl will look embarrassed and wait, hope that the attention subsides off her because she doesn't want it. Because getting that attention correlates to negativity. And it's funny because I actually really remember, this is a phrase from my childhood that I was going to attract negative attention. My dad's a psychiatrist, so. Um, so I, I think that the, the notions of behaving well and being rewarded for that are things that are ingrained in the assumptions and the norms of being a woman and growing up, uh, you know, being a woman who tries to make change. I think we've really seen this with another Jewish woman who has made a lot of trouble lately. We've already mentioned Sheryl Sandberg. I've actually on the launch committee for the Lean In Foundation, which is the, the foundation supported by the book Lean In, Woman, Work, and the Will to Lead. And I was really excited for this book to be unleashed on the masses because I had read it and I knew it was great. And not only that, I knew that it had the data to back up her assertions. It was, uh, the book was written in conjunction with a researcher from the Clayman School for Gender Studies at Stanford. So it was pretty amazing for me, even doing this work, even getting used to this uh, ongoingly over time, to see the backlash against Cheryl Sandberg because how could she possibly understand working women because she happened to be successful. And as Gloria Steinem recently pointed out, only for a woman would success be a barrier to writing a business advice book. So 
as we talk about making trouble and making history and behaving well, I think it's important to recognize those costs associated with it and to recognize in ourselves when we're holding back and recognize as well our, the, the initial reactions to negativity when we see a woman pushing forward against the grain. Because we've been taught that well-behaved women are what we are all supposed to be. And we know that well-behaved women don't make history. So what we have to do then is support our troublemakers, our misbehaviors, our women shaking fists and drinking maybe more mimosas than they should at a luncheon. I'm not saying that was me, but if that's you, go ahead. And go ahead together and make a little trouble and make a little history. Because that is what it, is, what it means to be a Jewish woman, which is what I have learned more and more as I have sort of come into my own as a Jewish adult. And I too am proud to stand up here as a Jewish woman, part of a long tradition of troublemakers making a difference. Thank you.